when it comes to UPSC civil services examination, an optional subject plays a very important role in your selection. The reason being two folds. Number one, when it comes to an optional subject, you require an in-depth study of the optional subject. What do I mean by that? For example, your GS subjects are your general studies subject and generic studies are required for that. But for optional, you would require an honors level of study. So more depth is required when it comes to optional. That's point number one. Point number two is the fact that the optional subjects are you may call it leniently checked or whatever. But the thing is that optionals are high scoring subjects. So an optional is also a high scoring subject. They, uh, whatever optional you select, you will have to give two papers for it. Let's say if you select sociology as an optional, you will give sociology paper one as well as sociology paper two, each of 250 marks. So in total, it carries 500 marks and you can get easily 300 plus going up to 350 plus marks as well out of 500. Hence, it is very important to choose the right optional number one and number two to prepare that optional in the correct manner. So today we will be discussing all those of you who have selected sociology as an optional will be discussing how we can approach sociology optional paper for UPSC civil services examination. We'll see its syllabus. We will see the books that are required and the strategy which is required to approach sociology as an optional for UPSC civil services examination that will get you marks in this range. All right. Now, before that, the very first thing is why sociology? Why sociology as an optional? Why sociology would be selected by you? What benefits does society, uh, sociology brings in is also important to understand so that there is no doubt in your mind about it. That is very important. Once you have selected, see before selecting an optional, think about it. But once you have thought through and utilize proper criteria for selection, then your focus has to be in one direction for preparing that optional. So very first uh, thing, why sociology is an optional? See, the syllabus of sociology is very limited. The syllabus of sociology is very limited. That's point number one. Point number two, again, with respect to syllabus is that you will already have some sort of understanding of the syllabus because sociology is what the study of society and where do we live? We already live in a society. So you would not be alien to this optional or the syllabus therein where uh, rather the syllabus would already be known to you. So it will be a known syllabus with limited quantity in present in it. Hence, making it one of the best choices for people to select sociology as an optional, especially those who are not from arts background. Let's say you are engineer, you are doctor, you are from commerce background. A lot of other uh, you know, experts also select sociology as an optional because of these reasons. Also, the syllabus is pretty much defined. For example, we will see that how the major chunk of the questions are asked from one particular unit and that is the unit of thinkers. So in fact, half the paper one is sorted if you just do one unit of thinkers. So that is also pretty much defined as to how much or how many questions of how many marks will come from that particular unit. Among this, there are various other reasons why sociology has become one of the favorite choices of aspirants to choose for their civil services examination. Now, let's move ahead. We have established why sociology is important. Now, let's quickly go into preparing sociology as an optional. It's approach strategy, books and syllabus. So let's first start with the syllabus part. Let's first start with the syllabus part. As I said, you will be having two papers. That is paper one and paper two. Now, paper one, which is there, which is titled Fundamentals of Sociology, deals with basically the Western world. Okay, the Western world, right? In the same manner, you would have guessed it, right? 
पेपर टू ऑन दी अदर हैंड वुड डील विद इंडियन सोसाइटी आई होप दैट एब्सोल्यूटली क्लियर सो लेट्स लुक एट द सिलेबस फॉर सोशियोलॉजी ऑफ पेपर वन एंड पेपर टू इट स्टार्ट विथ सोशियोलॉजी एज अ डिसिप्लिन नाउ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर इंपॉर्टेंट नॉट बिकॉज टू मच ऑफ क्वेश्चन मे बी आस्ट ऑन दैट बट जनरली फ्रॉम सोशियोलॉजी द डिसिप्लिन the questions are asked in question number 1 and uh, question number 1 in fact so in paper what happens is you have section a and you have section b so in section a you will have question number 1 question number 2 question number 3 and question number 4 in section b you will have question number 5 6 7 and 8 now the thing is you have to do any five questions out of this total eight but you have to do question number 1 and question number 5 compulsorily question 1 and question 5 are compulsory now the remaining three questions you can choose from any of the question uh, any of the sections provided you cannot choose all three from one section or all three from this particular section you can choose any three more questions but at least one from each of the section you have to choose so you can choose one from here and two from here or you can choose two from here and only one from here either way so you have to solve only five questions in total right but question number 1 and 5 are compulsory and then you can choose three more at least one from each the each of the sections that is the thing now generally the questions on sociology the discipline are placed as question number 1 in question number 1 in qu question number 1 and question number 5 in sociology are generally short notes five different short notes you have to write of 10 marks each so since they are placed generally in question number 1 there is no option to leave them right since there is no option to leave them so even if 10 or 20 marks question come from sociology as a discipline the discipline you cannot leave it that makes it really important now coming on to the next topic that is sociology as a science now this is also very important for two reason again a lot of questions when they come would be in uh, question number 1 which is compulsory but at the same time it requires a lot of understanding the understanding of sociology starts with this particular topic understanding would be required in the discipline also but that is sort of factual here more of understanding would be required for you and this will be setting the base or the tone for the most important unit that is your unit 4 sociological thinkers we'll come on to that before that there is unit 3 not unit 3 uh, so let's say topic 3 research method and analysis now this guys is a very factual chapter so here you would require to read a bit more understand what all are the different qualitative and quantitative methods what all are the different techniques for data collection the only understanding part would be here when you discuss the uh, reliability and validity and the relation between that right after this comes the most important the most important unit why the most important the most amount of understanding is required in this particular topic of thinkers you are given six thinkers number 1 karl marx number 2 emil durkheim number 3 max weber number 4 calcutt parsons number 5 robert k merton and number 6 g h mead all right so with respect to this particular unit and six thinkers half of your paper one questions will be from thinkers meaning easily 125 marks would be from thinkers at times this marks has gone up to 160 also just from these six thinkers remember i told you defined syllabus so it has gone up to 160 if you check 2014 paper you would realize 160 marks have come from thinkers and thinkers alone or at least around 125 marks the entire paper you have to do is of 250 marks 125 marks meaning let's say half half of the entire uh, of your paper one is coming from thinkers all right and in thinkers also the thing is it is pretty pretty much defined defined as in 
Karl Marx. You don't have to read anything and everything for Karl Marx. What do you have to read? Historical materialism. In historical materialism, Karl Marx traces the history of mankind based on the changes of use of modes of production and the relationship of production. So you have to study that. Mode of production is a part of historical materialism. Then you will be talking about alienation. Karl Marx says how uh, you know new forms of technology or industrial production has led to alienation. And then the class struggle. This is classic Karl Marx talking about haves and have nots the ownership class and the non-ownership class and how the struggle between the two takes place that's it nothing additional you have to read specifically these things throughout the history of sociology nothing additional of Karl Marx have been asked that is why the defined syllabus for Emile Durkheim you have division of labor that is sexual division of labor division of labor based on the sexes social facts suicide religion and society now, one thing you have to understand that when you are talking about class struggle or something else, there might be certain concepts hidden. Or when you are reading about Emile Durkheim and its, uh, his take on religion and society, you may read criticism of that based on some other thinker's perspective. So in that way, when you are reading Emile Durkheim and his ideas on religion, you can counter it by the ideas of religion of Karl Marx. All right. Then Max Weber social action ideal types authority bureaucracy protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism in the same manner for talcott parsons there are just two things social system and pattern variables for robert k merton also few things only latent and manifest function manifest functions are the functions which are very obvious latent functions are the functions we cannot see we need to research and deep uh, you know deep dive in order to understand so he talks about all that conformity and deviance and reference group very important interesting concepts these are not difficult as such but interesting concepts mead self and identity so this guys is your major chunk once this is done half of your paper one is done in fact i would say more than half is done why because in the remaining topics you would be using thinkers utilizing their theories their perspective in order to answer the questions of other topics as well I hope that is absolutely clear. All right. Having said that, let's move on to the fifth topic that is stratification and mobility. It will talk about the different stratas of society, why there are different stratas, what is the reason for that, how the mobility can take place among different strata. So the concepts of equality, inequality, hierarchy, exclusion, poverty and deprivation, all that is talked about. Theories of social stratification, very important. In theories, you have Marxist theory as well as Weberian theory. So again, Marx and Weber are used over here. So the most important things in your paper one would be the six thinkers and any kind of theory that is coming into the syllabus. Then you have dimensions, different dimensions of social stratification and all and social mobility I talked about. If you are at the lowest level of the strata, doesn't mean you will remain there. You can climb up. So how you can climb up, how you can fall down as well. All that will be discussed over here. Then so major understanding part theories, thinkers is done. Now let's come to more economic and political part. So in economic work and economic life. So organization and different types of society. Slave society, feudal society, industrial capitalist society. Now, interestingly, when you will be tracing historical materialism under Karl Marx, you would have already covered this. Again, making your syllabus more and more confined. Formal and informal organization, very general studies, GS kind of uh, topic you are finding over here. You know, formal and informal organization of work in Indian economy, labor and society, Indian economy and Indian society. But remember, the topics may look general, but your answer should be sociological. Do not make the mistake of answering in a general manner. The topics, the syllabus, a lot of part of the syllabus may look general. Your answer has to be sociological, which you will understand in the classes. All right. How to make your answer sociological. As I said, economics and political part is coming now. Now it is politics and society. So how politics and society are related, sociological theories of power, power elite, bureaucracy, nation state, difference between nation and state, etc, etc, citizenship and different kinds of protest. All these things are different kinds of protest. Protest, agitation, social movements, collective action, revolution. 
now we may in gender studies club all these things but now when you're specifically understanding and going into the depth you need to know the differences between that and then society is of course incomplete without religion so religion and society the sociological theories of religion here also you will study Karl Marx's theory of religion you will also study Emil Durkheim's theory of religion etc etc all right and when you study this an obvious question can be compare and contrast the theory of religion of Karl Marx and that of Emile Durkheim and these type of questions have been asked a lot comparing and cost contrasting the similar concept of different thinkers then types of religion religion in modern society and then this is something common in paper one and paper two system of kinship they are asking so generally with respect to the western world in paper two in indian society it will be with respect to the indian society and then finally social change in modern society the theories of social change what brings in social change the development and dependency agents what are the reasons who are the carriers or the agents of social change education science and technology so as you can see the first half up to the thinkers and even up to this stratification level required a lot of understanding and core sociological thing and then suddenly it started mixing with economy polity religion right and then of course kinship and social change so this is the paper one syllabus now let's come on to the books that you have to refer see People would be telling you to refer hundreds of books or tens of books. No, that much is not required. You would be watching the lectures which we will be coming up with. Okay, attending the classes, making class notes. All those things would be done. So a lot of things would be covered, but still certain standard books are required, which is recommended over here. The number one book is Sociology Themes and Perspective, either by Haralambus and Holborn or by Haralambus and Heald. Now I'll tell you the difference, the first difference generally that people look at it is, this is a blue color book, this is an orange color book. Now in both the book, similar theories, of course if the theory is of a similar person, it has to be, if of the same person, it has to be same. Then what's the difference? The only difference is this is thicker book. Why this is thicker? Because along with the theory, it also gives you research data, the numbers. Now that numbers will not be required, so that additional research is not required. So even if you can get hold of this orange book, this is more than enough. The difference between them is, this is 1000 plus pages, this is a thin book. At the same time, this book is costly, this book is cheap. This book is costly because research data, everything is there. However, PDFs are also available. Okay, not much of a difference, everything same, there just additional data is there, that's all which is as such not required for your UPSC examination. Then you have one interesting book that is Introduction to Sociology by Anthony Giddens, the thinkers and all are mentioned in that. Also in Sociological Theory of George Ritzer, again thinkers and different sociological theories are mentioned, your problem solved. But in addition to this, you should make sure to refer to IGNU's Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts BA and MA notes. Why will that be important? That will be important especially for these things. This work and economic life, politics and society, religion and society. It will be important for that and for some topics of let's say Talcott Parsons topic. Talcott Parsons is one of the most difficult thinkers to understand. BA notes makes it easy for you to understand. The most easiest thinker to understand is probably Karl Marx, then Max Weber, then in Mild Durkheim. The most difficult to understand is Talcott Parsons because his theory is sort of an imaginary universality theory which requires some imagination and thought process. If I have to give you a hint, what he says is, if I let's say throw this pen in air, I have done some action. Now this particular action is going to have a repercussion in USA also. Now you may think, how is that possible? But that is the concept of theory. There is more detailed understanding of that. It is not that philosophical only. There is detailed understanding. That makes it difficult because we cannot imagine that. So he has imagined that theory of universality, etc., etc., which we will see when we study Talcott Parson. And Ignu notes sort of makes that theory easy. Okay, let's quickly now move on to the paper two. 
Paper 2 is based on Indian society. Since it's based on the Indian society, Indian thinkers you will find. So section A, introdu introducing Indian society consists of the perspectives on the study of Indian society. First, they are going to talk about how do we even study the Indian society. Okay. Should we study by the previous literatures that were already written? Should we go on the field and do research? So on and so forth. With respect to that, you will have the thinker G.S. Gurye, M.N. Srinivas and Marxist sociologist that is A.R. Desai. You will be studying Marxist sociology of A.R. Desai. Then Indian society have been impacted due to the colonial rule. That is captured here by talking about impact of colonial rule on India. Now, having said that, majority of the population, you know, historically have been from rural areas. Rural area holds a lot of importance. So, social structure, the first thing you have, rural and agrarian social structure. And, of course, the caste system, the different perspectives of, uh, of the, on the study of caste system of G.S. Gurye, M.N. Srinivas, Louis de Mont and Andre Bete. So, perspectives of caste system of these particular thinkers, you can do some additional when you talk about criticism of them by someone else, but specifically of these thinkers, then features and untouchability. Then afterwards, tribal communities. See, importance is being given to rural structure, caste system, tribal communities, an integral part of the Indian society. And then coming on to the various social classes in India, that is agrarian and middle class in India. Finally, system of kinship which we saw in paper 1 is present in paper 2 also. Here, it will be specific to India. Right? Now, religion and society, talking about different religious communities in India and problems of religious minorities. So, when you are studying problems of religious minorities, you will not just study minoritarianism but majoritarianism also it's, and uh, the interaction of that. Then social changes in India under this visions of social change. What are the ways social change can be brought? For example, education can bring in social change. Then rural and agrarian transformation in India. How rural and agrarian transformation is happening? Further industrialization and urbanization. Again, a sort of change that is happening. And politics and society. Again, a same topic which was there in paper 1 is in paper 2 with respect to India. Then finally, the social movements that have taken place in India and population dynamics. These are now, uh, let's say, politico-economic or socio-political, social kind of topics which are there. Okay, not much theories, but the dynamics, the challenges of social transformation which exist in India. So this is your paper two topic less number of thinkers, less number of theories, less amount of understanding, more general studies kind of topic. But again, remember the answers would be sociological. Now, let's go on to the books for paper 2. <coughs> for paper 2, themes and social issues by Nadeem Hassan, Hasnan, sorry, Nadeem Hasnan will consist of a lot of theories and perspective which we would require. Then social change in modern India by M.N. Srinivas. The social change chapter topics can be completely done with this. Then there is perspective of caste system. So caste in its 20th century of Tar by M.N. Srinivas is very important. Plus A.R. Desai's, uh, you know, Marxist approach and A.R. Desai's social background of Indian nationalism is covered entirely under this book. One very important book, if you would ask me, sir, which one single book I should buy, I would, if I have to buy the first book, either it would be this or it would be Social Stratification by Dipankar Gupta. But later on, get hold of other books as well in order to cover the entire syllabus. Now, Modernization of Indian Tradition by Yogendra Sharma. Be very careful while reading this. It is a very difficult book to read. But don't worry when we are, uh, you know, doing that chapter, having that class on this particular topic will make it easier for you and you will be having your class notes. And at the end, of course, IGNU, BA and MA notes, especially for the ending topics like the work and economic life, the, cha the challenges, the population dynamics, etc, etc. All right. So this, guys, was your complete syllabus and the book list. I hope you have noted down. Now let's go into more details. Certain do's and don'ts and certain approaches. Now we will talk about the very first thing is 
प्लीज अवॉइड प्रीवियस इयर सोल्व क्वेश्चन बुक्स अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट डू नॉट डू इट इफ यू आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो यू हैव टू गो थ्रू द प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन and you know come up with yourself what you will write you can get it checked you can get the feedbacks done if you're not understanding on some questions what you have to answer please ask us we will tell you never go for this because the answers that they have written are sub par it is a recipe for failure if you refer to the answers written in such books available in the market so avoid that then strategy and approach for sociology optional one very important thing i'll tell you here is in the market you will also get let's say one single book has come which covers both the papers in let's say 300 pages please avoid that initially later on if you want to use that as a revision material fine you can do that but avoid for your first reading because they are sort of short notes or revision style books for first uh understanding for first reading you have to refer to the standard books that have been told attend the lectures attend the classes read the notes that are given read the standard books that are available once you are thorough with it once you have made two three readings and revisions of it and understood all the concepts then you can go for whatever books will be available in the market that is for revision purposes okay so the approach the strategy and approach should be what first you have to go through the standard books right along with it you know first of course you will be attending the lectures so lectures plus the standard books plus the class notes now please don't go with class notes of someone else i'll tell you why you should not go with that because when i'm teaching one particular topic and there were 10 different concepts or let's say 10 different points you will make notes of five different kinds of point which you did not understand which you find confusing which you find important someone else will make a note of something else so if you compare the notes of hundreds of different student the notes would be completely different right so your notes should be made by your hand so please attend these lectures and then make your own notes so attending the lecture would be the first thing making your own notes would be the second thing and the third thing you would be doing is reading the standard books and once you do that guys what you do is class notes are already there from standard books also you can make your own notes and once you do this there is no need for any book from the market for revision purpose or for any purpose because for revision and all you already have your class notes plus the notes you have made from the standard books this along with the answer writing practice which will happen uh, regularly in the classes at the end of the class questions will be given and in the next class those questions uh, would be given feedback on discussed as to how the answer should have been written all right and then there would be test series and stuff so nothing else you have to it will be a one stop solution you don't have to go for anywhere else now coming on to notes as i said you have to make notes so how should the notes be the notes should be talking about the thinkers the mentioning of the thinkers is very important what concepts they have proposed is very important you cannot write the entire concept concept and explain but you should ensure if you are reading a particular topic of any particular thinker you need to mention the thinkers perspective right after uh, so that needs to be there in your notes apart from that for each and every perspective there has to be criticism please understand this do not think that one particular theory is sacred there cannot be any criticism please don't do that you need to write criticism and that criticism was given by which of the thinkers you need to clearly mention so thinkers perspective and the criticism if you can just keep making notes on these two these two things rest of the things guys you can fill it on your own by the understanding you have so this but this why i'm saying this notes because this you need to remember what you have to remember the name of the thinker and what their perspective was so this kind of note making would be very important and beneficial for multiple revisions remembering and then reproducing in the answers now if you talk about the trend and types of questions the trend sort of i already mentioned if you talk about thinkers half of paper 1 half of paper 1 is sorted 
minimum about 125 marks questions come from thinkers. But if you type, talk about the types of questions, guys, this is very important now, the types of questions. If you look at 7, 8, 10 years back, the questions were very straightforward, talking about uh, the theories, the thinkers. Now, the questions are more application-based also. I'll tell you what they're doing, application-based. And not just application-based, what are they doing is, they are using the paper one concept and topic and applying it on the Indian society, that is paper two. So for example, they would say, uh, what degree of alienation do you think is present in the Indian society? Discuss. So the alienation concept is of Karl Marx. It was, it is in paper one, right, of Karl Marx. So you have studied with the Western world, but now they are going to ask the same concept with respect to the Indian society, right? So here your understanding comes into the picture. Your understanding of Indian society, what is going on there and your clear understanding of alienation is important so that you can apply that in India. So how will you apply? You will apply about the same thing, but certain things would be different. For example, when you talk about more industrialization, Karl Marx says the more industrialization, the more capitalist tendency, the more will be alienation. Now, if compared to the Western world, if India is less industrialized, less capital, so maybe the alienation will also be lesser. So that is how India would differ, but alienation would still be there because industrialization and capitalist tendencies are there, but it will be in a milder form. So you need to apply the concept of alienation given by Karl Marx for the Western world on the Indian society and that is the kind of application based questions are coming. Do not get bogged down by thinking that, oh my God, it was only for Western world. Now what I do? Don't worry. Apply that on the Indian society. You know alienation concept. You know how Indian society is. Apply it. Tell the similarities. Tell the differences of its application on the Indian society. Right? Then let's move ahead. Let's take a simple question. With the help of this, I will tell you why you know what you need to do to get selected because see everyone would be reading everyone would be studying everyone would be, would be understanding so what will give you the edge over others is what i'm going to tell you with the help of this question this question says write a short note on alienation now alienation has been asked in the syllabus alienation has been given in the con context of karl marx under karl marx they have written alienation right so your majorly your answer will be fixated on Karl Marx, but you should write one, you should of course be giving Karl Marx's perspective. You should also be giving the criticism which people have given for Karl Marx, but a single sentence you can write on, let's say J.W. Mills's perspective on alienation just one single sentence so that you make your answer multi-dimensional and do not restrict it to Karl Marx don't write too much just one single sentence of a different perspective that's it and then start the criticism and then conclude the answer so that is gonna make your answer having one more dimension that's point number one point number two whenever there are standard books or notes floating in the market they are very limited so we are going to tell you certain additional things which you can write in your answer which others will not write. For example, when you talk about alienation, you can check all the notes, books in the market and you'll find that they talk about alienation of the proletariat. Who are the proletariat? The proletariats are have-nots. Have nots as in those who do not own the mode of production or factors of production. They are the non-ownership class. Non-ownership class. So all the notes and books you will find alienation of only the proletariat. But in reality, in his original works, Karl Marx has also talked about. Sorry, let me just write it better. Karl Marx has also talked about alienation of the haves or let's say the ownership class. Okay, now we may say why the ownership class is having alienation. See, alienation happens when 
you are not deciding what to produce how much to produce and after you are producing what is happening with that good since you are not the owner you do not decide all that and since you are not having control of decision making you are alienated owners have that right to decide what to produce how much to produce what happens to the goods so on and so forth but karl marx says that that there will come a time wherein competition will be so high that even capitalists will compete against each other and then you will not be able to produce what you want to produce you would be required to produce what the mar- what the market demands right i let's say i am interested in football i want to have a business in football so i want to produce football and football stuffs but indian market does not demand that it demands cricket so i'll have to switch to producing cricket so am i deciding what i have to produce no it's the market which is making me decide that's point number 1 point number 2 when there is more competition i may not be able to sell at a high margin so i may not be able to sell to the people i want to sell at the price i want to sell all those decision all those power will also slowly and steadily being taken away then i will also face elimination of course not to the degree that is faced by the have nots but the haves that is the bourgeois class he calls them will also face alienation so the moment you mention this single point you have got the edge on others it is as simple as that all right now certain questions you can pre prepare and go what are those questions a lot of short notes short notes on alienation short notes on sociology and philosophy sociology and anthropology sociology and economics compare and contrast sociology and economics so on and so forth plus thinker questions also let's say a different perspective of durkheim and weber on religion compare and contrast durkheim and weber on religion durkheim and marx on religion durkheim and marx division of labor durkheim and marx alienation and anomy and in the same way marx and weber marx and weber marx and weber on religion capitalism and social stratification so three main thinkers you have that is durkheim weber and marx so a combination of these two or a combination of these two or a combination of these two so three different combinations on different different topics can be asked you can have pre prepared points and go and write amazing answers in your answer sheet i hope that is absolutely clear if in thinkers also wants sir which is the most important guys don't go there make sure you do all the thinkers completely but still just out of curiosity if you want max weber is the highest asked thinkers around 40 50 marks of question would be of uh, max weber then would be your karl marx then would be your emil durkheim and then would be the other three thinkers that is telkert parson g h mead and r k r k morton and g h mead all right so that is all about your pre prepared questions now finally answer writing for sociology now in answer writing for sociology i want to discuss one thing do one thing make sure that you write previous 5 years of answers previous 5 years i'll tell you why sociology is a static subject since it's static if you cover previous 5 years guys half of the paper will be repeated maybe slight change maybe application based instead of direct but half of the paper will be repeated if you have covered previous 5 years of question paper so before starting to write the new questions that questions of the test series do that also because that is also required because the remaining half is still pending right but first start with the previous year question papers go backwards so for example 2023 then 2022 then 2021 then 2020 right and the, let's say 20 uh, and then 2019 like that you can go backwards as much as you can no, no need to go too backward of up to 25 30 30 years no just 5 to 10 years is the optimum number you can go and that would ensure that half of the paper will be actually repeated okay almost half of the paper would be repeated you will feel that you have already written the answers all right so this is how you approach your sociology optional paper it is very simple very simple if you understand one mistake you can do is 
and in certain topics you can end up writing generic answers you don't have to you have to ensure that you write sociological answers how can you write sociological answers when you use sociological terminologies sociological theories sociological thinkers but do not overdo for example 10 mark question of 150 uh, 10 mark question of 150 words please do not write six seven different thinkers and different perspectives you are not there to throw thinkers and perspective on the face of the evaluator you need to utilize it to the optimum level all that we will be discussing throughout our course of lectures at the same time especially in paper 2 focus on certain current affairs things whenever you are making notes related current affairs news you should keep writing down next to the topic okay next to the topic of that particular uh, notes of that particular topic because the moment you link it's a static subject but the moment you link the static with current affairs what will happen you will get those additional marks so current affairs should be a part of some of the answers you write in sociology all right so guys that is how you approach sociology when the full fledged classes will start each and everything would be further discussed in details thank you